You've got to take this serious, and here is why. Let's go into the hurricane warnings this morning, and you can see where they are from the mouth of the Mississippi in the Anclote Key. We expect uh, hurricane-type conditions within 24 hours, and you can see tropical storm uh, conditions extending westward and eastward. Didn't find too many onshore tropical storm gusts yet, but that will be happening as we work our way through this afternoon. You can see what is uh, happening when you talk about a hurricane warning. Winds at 74 miles an hour or greater torrential rains and dangerous high tides and seas. And I'll tell you right now, tides are going to play a big role in this. Storm surge is one of the big problems we're going to face with Opal. And I'm, we're talking about seas here that are going to be anywhere from 12 to 20 feet as this thing just piles up the water. Now again, it, we could be talking about a landfall near Pensacola but any type of uh, change there in direction is going to obviously change the path of this thing uh, considerably. So do not let your guard down if you live in Mobile or if you live in Pensacola or obviously if you live in Apalachicola. Speaking of Pensacola, our very own Bill Keneally is live at Pensacola Beach. And Bill, uh, obviously you've uh, experienced a little rainy weather this morning. Give us uh, what you're currently seeing there. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Again, we are here in Pensacola Beach. We're about a quarter mile, by the way, off of the Bob Sykes Bridge, which connects up Gulf Breeze and the actual Barrier Island itself here in Pensacola Beach. And as you can see, as we look down the beach to our east, you can see the seas are definitely very angry. And once again, the seas are probably running about four to six feet, I'd say, right now. These are probably some of the swells that were generated probably a day, maybe two days ago. And once again, we're looking for the tide coming up. Tide's about high right now. You can see some of the seaweed and the debris coming up the beach. And we saw a high tide last night. It was not near this high. We actually tried to set up a live shot up on the pier. And uh, once again, you can see the water now approaching the edge of that pier decking. So it looks like that pier is probably not going to stand the test of time too much longer. Again, I think we've uh, been very lucky here over the lower 48. As you had mentioned, we've had a very, very active season. And uh, once again, you get a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, there's really little way out. Everybody has a heightened awareness, I'm sure, of the entire northern Gulf Coast. But as I do think the folks know, here in Navarre Beach, especially Navarre Beach, by the way, about 15 miles down the beach, they are very respectful of these hurricanes. And it does appear now the barrier island just about deserted. As we talked about earlier, the evacuation order went out at 10 o'clock last night to be completed by noontime local time today. That was bumped up to about 9 a.m. And I was talking to the officers for Scandia County Sheriff's Department. And they say there are still a few people out here. And once again, we wish them the very best of luck. But once again, that surge is probably going to be, as you say, minimal of 12 feet. And as we saw earlier, the winds are out of the northeast. And I think that storm will come in overhead. Thank you very much yeah. for that report. We'll keep checking back with you. And obviously, with an approaching system, we're going to see the winds pick up. We're going to see the waves pick up there where Mr. Keneally is. And I would imagine uh, before too long, they're going to even kick him out because we are talking about a very, very dangerous situation. Let's get into this a little bit more. You can see behind me the hurricane. And uh, one of the interesting things that the uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft is reporting is a lot of thunder and lightning associated with this particular storm, especially on the northeastern side of it where they found a tremendous flight level wind at nearly 175 miles an hour, but that's at 5,000 feet up. And I, for some reason, I wouldn't be surprised if that's inten adding to the intensification of this thing. But right in here, you can see the eye of the storm moving to the north, northeast, and we are talking about a landfall sometime uh, around 15 hours. Now, again, any type of diversion there, and you've got a whole different track. And that's why I'm saying from Mobile over to Apalachicola, you've got to be prepared for this. So storm surge, think about it. You've got this thing coming in here, and you're just going to push all this water right up into this convex area known as the Florida Panhandle. And as Bill showed you, all the barrier islands there are just going to be covered with water in what could be a 12 to 20 foot storm surge here coming up. Here's the latest advisory on Opal, 27.0 north, 88.7 west. And notice the wind there, 135 miles an hour. That makes it a Category 4 storm. The pressure down to 917 millibars. It's come up just a millibar from the lowest pressure we've seen uh, with this thing at 916. But an amazing storm, to say the least. Let me show you what this means regarding the Saffir Simpson scale. Yesterday, we were dealing with a hurricane with 100 mile per hour winds. Now we're down here in the Category 4 range of 131 to 155 mile per hour winds potentially with a Cat 4. And if you talk about damage with a Cat 4, you're talking about extreme. And that leads me into the second part of what I have to caution you about here. We're not only talking about the coastline. 
we are not only talking about the coastline. Take a look at Alabama, Georgia, up into Tennessee and North Carolina. We've seen extensive rainfall up in this area over the past 24 hours in the tune of three to nine inches potentially. Now you've got saturated soils here, not to mention a category four hurricane moving at nearly 20 miles an hour onshore. There is no way that this thing is going to slow steam that quickly. So don't be surprised if you're going to see uh, tremendous damage in Montgomery, Dothan, uh, Columbus, Birmingham, Atlanta, on up toward Chattanooga, Knoxville, especially if it takes the current path that it is on. So I am not only cautioning coastal, coastal residents to be prepared for what could be uh, weeks without power or anything for that matter with the size of this storm, but also inland sections as well. You could lose power and uh, I, mean, I just can't imagine the kind of destruction we're going to see inland. If you can think back to perhaps Hugo when Charlotte was affected well west of the coastline, I want you to kind of draw some similarities there because I think that's exactly what's going to happen with Opal. Alright, that's the latest on that for you. We'll continue to keep you updated. Let's go back to the studios and find out what the rest of the nation looks like with Jody. Thanks, Jim. We want to remind everyone where the evacuations are mandatory, and they are mandatory in the areas in red. Now, there are some shelters that are set up, but the best thing to do is just leave the coast and head northward because, as Jim was mentioning, and we already saw the pictures from Keneally, that uh, the surf will start to come up and the storm surge is going to be intense with this hurricane. Now, a tornado watch has been issued. This has just been issued now by the Severe Storms Forecast Center until 6 o'clock local time for portions of Florida and through Alabama. Now, I'll show you why, because we have uh, one of those feeder bands. You can see it right here starting to move very close to the coastline, and which is very common with hurricanes, is that we do see severe weather breaking out. And with this strong a feeder band moving upward, that is why we have the, uh, the uh, tornado watch that has been issued. You can see the moisture streaming all the way up the east coast. We have a strong storm as well across the west with winter storm warnings down to the Colorado Rockies. High wind watch for the foothills today from Boulder through Metro Denver and high wind warnings down across the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. You can see the tremendous moisture streaming all the way to New York City. You're going to see the showers and thunderstorms moving from Atlanta all the way through the Carolinas, as Jim was talking about, and we have the snow flying throughout the mountains as well. Quick peek at uh, the locally eight inches is that's what we expect as Opal on top. What we've already seen, that's what we expect from Opal, Severe weather, we talked about the uh, tornado watch that already is in effect through this region. Flash flood watches are very extensive already across the southeast, and there certainly is a problem with winds here and through the front range. What about the forecast?